Welcome to the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. Access granted. It's time for... It's family. Who goes on, you geeks, nerds, and blurs? Let's get our geek on. Welcome back. It's David from the 5 by 5 and this is Fanboy Weekly. So I want to thank you guys for joining me today, tonight, this morning, this afternoon, uh, whenever you listen to it, however you're listening to it. I appreciate you guys, um, but we had to do a show today, right now, in this moment. Um, so I gave you guys a day because yesterday was the season premiere of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, I turned my phone off. I turned my Facebook off. Except for Get Glue. I kept my Get Glue on so I could get the free sticker. So if you guys go to getglue.com, you can get stickers for the show. I might be a little bit old, but that's part of my little fanboy geekiness. I like getting the stickers, and I end up I have a show book that I write all my notes in, so I put all my stickers on my uh, <laughs> on my show book. Um, but yes, uh, Marvel's Agent of Shields. So hopefully I'm not going to try to spoil too much um, of it for you. So if you guys haven't watched it, there may be some spoilers in it. So uh, just I told you. <laughs> but anyhow, um, the show lived up to all the hype. Uh, you know, they've been hyping the show since um, the, the Avengers movie. You know, of course, Josh, we- Josh Whedon um, wrote and directed the pilot along with his brother. And um, like I said, it to me it lived up to the hype it got a little corny toward the end but you know that's what I expect from Josh Whedon and they uh, they, who had some cameos Um, when the first cameo and I didn't realize who it was um, Ron Glass for all the newbies and Josh Whedon fans they remember uh, Ron Glass from Firefly but as a kid I seen Ron Glass on Barney Miller and another bit of trivia he's from my hometown or he lived here his family lives there I went to school well I I knew um, his nephew Uh, and then my grandmother uh, babysit or they lived close to my grandmother um, years ago when they were all little kids so that's my Ryan Glass connection but um, uh, he doesn't come back to town much (laughs) But, but yeah, he made a cameo. He played the doctor. It was very brief. Um, then we see Maria Hill um, at back. You know, she was a big part in not a big part, but she was. You know, she was she was a character in the Avengers movie um, as an agent. And um, it, you know, they just threw a lot of stuff at us. Um, first of all, the new. Um, the new guy, because it's like a recruitment show. Um, Brett Dalton play, is playing Grant Ward, and he was kind of this, and that's where they started. He's kind of this super spy guy, and they're doing some cool stuff. I love the effects in the show, by the way, um, especially the beginning with the little plate and fingerprints, and he's fighting, and um, so that was. And they even said he was had the highest score, second only to um, Black Widow. So I thought that that connection uh, was cool. But this is set in the same Marvel Universe as the Avengers movies, as the Thor movie, as Captain America, and as Iron Man. And uh, so there's the continuity there. Um, Whether they're going to expand to bring in... I guess this would be the show that kind of tests characters. We'll probably see mutants. Um we'll probably see uh, people from Hydra uh, I, I, I see them using this as a platform to introduce people that we know um, because like I said Maria and um, of course Agent Coulson who has been resurrected but we all knew this because he was on the commercials and one little tidbit we still don't know who ate what or well we know how because they Maria Hill was talking to uh Grant Agent Ward about uh, Coulson being killed during the the Avengers project during the the fight over uh, in New York the battle in New York City, and he said, "Yeah, I know he was he he was killed in action." And then Agent Coulson and you guys seen this in the commercial, so I'm not telling you anything new. Um, 
he comes out and he makes a little joke. I don't remember him being as funny in the movies. Um, one of the bloggers that put this is kind of reminiscent, and you see Josh Whedon all over this with the the kind of the little quirky humor, and um, they're making him more per- more personable. But he was a little more not really stoic, but he wasn't as funny in the in all the movies that he uh, was featured in. Um, like he was in uh, Marvel's Agent of, Agents of Shield, um, but she says to um, uh, to Ward, she's like, he says, what he was killed, and they and you, they really don't. He, let me stop. Agent Coulson says, yes, he, I was stabbed. I was, I was dead. I stopped breathing for forty seconds, and they made the comment about uh, how Nick Fury um, said he had passed to motivate. Um, uh, the Avengers to be the Avengers to to assemble the team, and he's and uh, he's like yeah they put me on a beach in Tahiti and for X amount of time, and but then there's another exchange. So me I'm like oh that's what they're gonna do, and I was gonna be okay with that. I'm like oh if that's what they're gonna do, this is how they because you we never seen him dead dead. You, we never after Marvel's very smart. The directors are very smart. After you know Loki stabs him, he shoots Loki in the movie. You know, and then um, Fury goes to him and and he sees him, takes the cards out of his his jacket. You know, the cards were in the, uh, but he's talking to him where he's dead already supposedly. We never see him anymore. We just hear he's dead. We see the cards, which they weren't in in his um, jacket. They were in his locker. So, we found out in the Avengers movie, anyhow, and um, and we never seen him dead. So that's what I was going to be okay with. We never seen him dead. It is a comic book movie. You know how many times have Jean Grey come back to life? You know how many times have these other characters come back to life? So it, it's it happens in the Marvel universe. They don't stay dead long, and um, and so I thought, okay, this is fine. It works for me. Move on. But then the exchange between um, Maria Hill and uh, Agent Ward, she says, he can never know. And I'm like, what? What just happened? Is he is he not he? And so alluding to the fact that Agent Coulson isn't Agent Coulson. Uh, I asked some questions online. I tweeted about it a little bit. And they were saying, well, he's a LMD, um, some kind of life model decoy um, in which I looked that up as well and it's something that the, Sh- the S.H.I.E.L.D. has used that Nick Fury has used in the past but early on it was like 1965 when that was first introduced so if they're going back there grabbing that I think that's cool um, but supposedly if it, this is if that's what he is it, it lives as this person but the only hint that I've seen that he, that this could, he could be an android um, was at the very end when um Michael Peterson, and I'll get to that, kicks in, uh, kicks out the van doors, and he's able to dodge it. I'm like, oh, and then from what the uh, Marvel Wiki says, these LMDs are very uh, superhuman strength, superhuman agility, speed. Um, so I'm like, huh, but you never see him fight. So they're they're um, they're they're playing this really really well. Um, the villain is something called Centipede, what, which we see on um, Michael Peterson's, and it was another um, character that they've u- that they that was you know kind of buried in uh, Marvel history. Um, a friend of Slapstick. I'm not familiar with that at all, but he was a, he was a Marvel character um, in this arc- incarnation. He's somebody who obviously had an accident um, and then he went to this doctor whom he ended up saving who's part of the bad guys um, centipede and they give him this like I thought it was something maybe from the technology that the aliens had left uh, left um, when 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 the, the Avengers defeated uh, the Shikari so and he's played um, by a character that that Josh Whedon used before in um, Angel, um, and that is J. August Richards. Uh, remember, he was Charles Gunn on Angel, and um, he helped Angel um, and his little detective agency. So I'm like, okay, they're they're pulling out all so they pull all these people that I absolutely love. You know, of course, you know if you know me, I'm a big Buffy fan, which I need to do a Buffy uh, a Buffy show. Uh, everything that I loved about Buffy, but. Um, 
and catch Sarah Michelle Geller. She's going to be on a new show called The Crazy. So she's in comedy now. So it would be nice if if Buffy could make some kind of appearance on this show. But yeah, maybe she she doesn't want to do that anymore. But who knows? I would like to see Elijah Dusku as well, uh, or maybe even Willow. <laughs> but not but not 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 the, the, those characters. But uh, as somebody in Marvel, uh, in the Marvel universe. But um. Uh, so basically um, this is a recruitment show um, they have uh, Melinda May uh, when he, he he's telling her you know I'm not asking I'm telling you to drive the plane but she ends up getting getting kind of tossed around by Michael Peterson um, and uh, but she's bad we get to see her fight in and she, she's a bad chick so I like seeing that then we have um, uh, Fitz and Simmons um, which is um, two of the scientists slash computer nerds slash agents, um, and you, we'll, oh, they're going to develop hopefully with their little tech, um, the gadgets and stuff. I thought that was their part was cool. They were almost too corny, so I hope they they tone that down for the series. They can still be kind of geeky, but it was almost too much. It was like overacted almost. And then you have Sky, which. Uh, she was part of the revolutionary trying to call out the shield um, to expose the new world of superheroes that the Avengers movie introduced to the world in the Marvel Universe in the movie and um, so she's part of the team now and because um, she was the only one able to crack shield um, security and they couldn't crack hers but they ended up find, found, they found her and then she was a big part of the story because she was the first person to find Michael Peterson because she's seen him uh, do his super heroics um, and then we found out that that was all it was a lab and uh, somebody had uh, blown up and then Extremis which we've seen in Iron Man 3 it was present in that blown up lab um, so all this stuff they're pulling from, the, from all the movies from the comic books um, from the mythos, so I'm like, wow, this show is a lot. A lot of people, they, some people on, online, they were comparing it to um, the X Files, Fringe, and Heroes, all kind of wrapped up in one with the the whole Buffy, um, Scooby Gang um, slant to it. So I, I think it's going to be a good series. Um, I think more than the hardcore comic book fans are going to enjoy. I think more than um, this is the people who have seen the movies are going to enjoy it, so it's going to broaden uh, the audience for Marvel, and they're they're playing this brilliantly, um, and they had their product placement because it was a one of the big Thor um, trailers was played during um, the season premiere. So guys, check that out. It's Marvel's Agent of Shield. I'm trying to think if I left anything out. Uh, there was so much. Um, <laughs> during the premiere, uh, it was it was a lot, but it wasn't. It was, it was very fluid, um, and and it went really. It, it went. I, th I thought it went too fast. Too fast. Um, and let's see, um, but I will say this: I was reading on the Huffington Post. Um, they had a couple other things that they pulled from uh, the Marvel universe as a whole. Um, when Sky is talking about her, Michael Peterson, she was saying, with great power comes, and she doesn't say great responsibility. She says, a ton of weird crap that you're not ready to deal with. So that was kind of a, a tip on our hat to Spider-Man, uh, which I'm excited to see the new Spider-Man movie. I don't know when it's coming out. I don't know if it's going to come out this year. It's going to probably be next summer with Jamie Foxx as Electro. Can't wait to see that. Um, and what else? Um, they said there's going to be a ton of Easter eggs, and this is the, a new thing now. They're putting all the stuff that you don't see unless you're a hardcore fanboy or just happen to get lucky and notice something, and you're like, "Oh wow, that's what that is." So I'm going to be looking for the Easter eggs. Um, if you guys have some, you see something, or you have something from the the premiere, or even as we go, because this is going to be part of our weekly fanboy uh, show. Um, 
going over Agents of Shield, Marvel's Agents of Shield. Um, I think the hashtag people were trying to figure out what the hashtag on Twitter was going to be was going to be Pound Agents of Shield or Pound AOS. Um, I used Pound AOS because it was a little bit simpler to type typing all that out. But uh, so if you see some Easter eggs, see something I miss, share some of your views. Uh, tell me what you think Agent Coulson is. Um, tip me up on Twitter at the five by five, and the fives are numeric, so it'd be the number five by number five, um, or even put it on the Facebook page, and it's the five by five completely spelled out. Or you can leave a comment either on the blog of Recycle Blog Talk that blogspot.com, or on the Spreaker page. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right right back. for tuning in this is the five by five fanboy weekly um i'm david if you did listen to the first part of the the uh cast today um we talked about marvel's agents of shield um i didn't tell a lot about the the particular episode because i want you guys to experience it and check it out um i might do something more next week about what happened in the first episode going into um next Tuesday episode, but you can catch it on ABC at 7 o'clock um, Central Standard, 7 o'clock my time, but it's 8 o'clock Eastern Eastern time. But now we're going to talk a little bit about Apple and um, with the onslaught of everything that Apple has happened in the last um, seven days with iOS 7 coming out, uh, the new iPhone, they snuck in a I don't know how sneaky they were, but they did sneak in a Apple TV update, which I'm glad I wasn't one of the ones that ended up with a brick system after Friday's update because I was at work, so I didn't get to update it, and then I totally forgot about it until earlier this evening, and um, and so it prompted me, and it was a, actually it was a pretty big update because it took a little while for it to download and apply, but um, a few changes um, they've added, which. Actually, I actually like because um, before I had a Roku, which I played my uh, Pandora and Slacker Radio on, but now uh, my Apple TV. This is this is why I sold my Roku because Apple TV is adding so many different things to Apple TV. And you remember, they always uh, considered this product as a as a hobby, uh, not something that they was really concerned about. But in the last what six months. Uh, they've come in the last year. They've they, they've really added a lot. You know, we seen Hulu Plus has always had Netflix, Netflix, Hulu Plus, HBO Go, watch P, watch ESPN, but now we have iTunes Radio, which, and I'm actually messing with it right now. That's one thing. What Apple does, they do a really good job about how it should look, how um, interactive it should be how um, easy it should be to access and you know and um, I don't use the I don't know what even happened to my the Apple TV remote but I use my uh, Samsung remote which controls all my devices that are hooked to my television and it works pretty seamlessly I know I had to change some buttons around um, so I had to turn my blu-ray player off to the I use my blu-ray players for stuff but anyhow you guys don't care about that but um, iTunes Radio, they did add um, it, you know, and I never listened to iTunes Radio on uh, when I had a Nano years ago. It's not available on the Touch, um, 
but when I have a nano, I never I never used it. I think because it was on there. But that's been many many years ago, and um, I never used it on my computer uh, through iTunes. But now it's on Apple TV, so I don't. Have, not that I was worried about it, but I don't have to worry about Pandora anymore because I have it. Um, I've already made. Uh, well, I made one station, and I took two of their stations, uh, the '80s R&B Soul and Radio. Love. I was. I'm an '80s boy. Love '80s R&B music. I love '90s R&B music. Um, and then it has the iTunes Top 100 R&B and Soul. That was one of their. They was already pre-made, and then I made a Janet Jackson radio station. Um, but I'm going to make a Beyonce one, just so you know. But uh, <laughs> it um, it gives you your history, and the feature stations right now are Pure Pop, Yes DJ, Katy Perry, Pol Pepsi Pulse Pop, um, Yes DJ Diplo. Hope I pronounced that right. Um, iTunes Festivals. Uh, 2013 shows, which that should be interesting because I didn't get to watch the shows. Uh, the Beatles Radio, one's called If You Like Drake, The Voice, which you know it premiered this week as well. Uh, Three of a Kind by Robin Thicke, uh, Jared Leto, uh, LA Rock, Scene, 60s and 70s, Jazz Showcase, Rev Up, Chill Out R&B and Soul, and If You Like Arcade. Um, there's some others. I, I have it. Trending on Twitter, hip hop. I'm gonna add that. That seems kind of pretty cool because I'm so I get so behind in music. I get to thinking about, oh, what what's the new songs and, I'm you know I'm getting not that I'm getting up there, but I am a man of particular age, so um, I don't know what all the kids are listening to <laughs> nowadays. And I still think I have a little uh, a little hip hop in me. At least a little bit, <laughs> but check out the iTunes Radio if you have an Apple TV. Um, it's a good addition to the setup. Um, they also added um, a feature on the podcast, which for if you guys listen to this, if you're a podcaster, if you have your podcast, your Spreaker podcast on um, iTunes um, now. Because for my iOS device, I always push it to my Apple TV through AirPlay, but now it has a My Podcast tab. So it has all the ones that you downloaded on your computer, all the ones you downloaded on your iOS device. It's going to automatically sync to your to the app on Apple TV. So I have Real Talk with David Nikki is my number one. Um, a friend of the show, Off Limit, um, icon from the Off Limit show. I have him on there. Uh, Geek Soul Brother. Ooh, I can't talk tonight. Geek Soul Brother. Black Girl Nerds. This Week in Marvel. It's a good one to have. Uh, Short Box Podcast. It's another good one. Um, I have my Dexter Podcast. So all the ones I've downloaded on my iOS device device is automatically pushed uh, to my Apple TV now so I think that's really good and they've added some different tabs there's a my stations tab um, which is going to do your most recent and all unplayed so that's going to be the ones that like the the new ones from the ones that you have already uh, subscribed to um, it's going to give you a top podcast which you didn't before um, it did have like uh, videos. I don't know. If, I don't see where they're doing um, differentiation between the two anymore, which before they did. Um, and genres. So it's going to make the podcast app a little bit more. I don't know, more you, um, more user friendly. Uh, it's going to. It looks better. Um, so. I like the whole podcast app on the Apple TV. Um, and then we get to iCloud Photos, uh, which used to be called Photos. So all the um, like uh, albums that you make on your iOS device and you put it in the cloud, they will be automatically pushed and synced uh, to the iCloud cloud photo app on your Apple TV. So I thought that was kind of cool as well. Um, I just think they just changed the name. I don't see anything too terribly different um, from it. Um, they do have activity, which that will show. And mine hasn't been hasn't been synced since this like May of uh, May May of this year. So I had to figure out what's going on there. But um, so that's a new addition. One th oh, and here's the big thing, and I totally forgot. I was going to leave this out. Um, 
they have added the music store to your Apple TV and finally all the music um, when I looked a while ago it said all my music that I had purchased was syncing and so I don't know if it's all on there yet um, but it has uh, all my songs that I have purchased through the iTunes um, store there's all my Janet there's all my Beyonce Tamar Braxton Rose Royce uh, Climax, <laughs> um, Candy, um, just different things that I've purchased, even the videos. Oh wow, there's I see that wasn't on there before. So that that's there's some good things on here that wasn't on here before, um, because my the the music store is um, completely immersed in your Apple um, on the Apple TV app. Um, they have top music which you can buy. Um, right from your screen um, what you would see in your iTunes so are they making the computer obsolete because uh, not that I use iTunes a lot anymore now uh, to, to, to make CDs to sync my iOS device because um, if, if I buy music I, I buy it from my iOS device I don't buy it from my iTunes and then that's automatically synced as well um, but it looks like um, music videos so they've updated that I'm, I'm in love with that that's that's pretty cool um, what they've done uh, for us oh they had to give you the top 10 so cool I'm in love with that so check that out as well one thing I did notice on the TV show and I'm mad right now at App, not Apple at uh, ABC for not giving us because normally they give you a free season premiere of of a new series. They'll give you the first episode. Um, I got Sleepy Hollow. I got shows that I haven't even watched yet. And like like with New Girl and the Mindy Project, they gave you a free. But ABC did not give us Marvel's Agent of Shield. It's a dollar ninety nine cents. So <laughs> if you want to watch, you probably have to end up watching on Hulu or on ABC's website. But Anyhow, I guess it really doesn't matter, but um, it, it looks more, and I'm going to say this and not say it with all um, respect to Apple. When you go to purchase the movie um, or TV show, whatever, it looks a lot like the Voodoo app that I have on my um, Blu ray player. You know, it's kind of reminiscent of that to me I don't use it um, because it's, it's kind of glitchy and doesn't really work it's kind of slow but um, yeah that's what kind of looks like to me but so it, it looks like um, and that's the only thing to me that doesn't seem as seamless as it was before or or as user friendly as it was before because when I put purchase um, it brings up another screen and the, the, the little animation is a little bit better it kind of like a blowout and it goes out and it doesn't say because I could always back out and it doesn't say whether it's purchased or not it tells you automatically you have just purchased such and such and such you can click buy and you can play this on your iOS device uh, iTunes and it tells you what um, devices um, it's available that it's going to be available on. Um, so I'm like, mm, I don't know if I like that, but you know, it it it, it looks good. Um, but I think that's all the updates we got for Apple TV. So check it out. I'm going to be probably playing with this and checking all the stuff out and and rearranging the, my because now that, since the update came out, I had to rearrange my apps again. You know, I want my my watch well, since there's nothing really going on in tennis I'll put my watch ESPN down at the bottom and some of the other you know some of the other ones that I really don't use um, I'll leave the move the top line I'll leave it alone the movies TV shows music iTunes radio and computers I'll leave that alone the settings I'll leave that alone um, my second line I'll leave alone I'm going to see they push my HBO go down below Vimeo and who uses Vimeo I don't um, so I'm going to push that up to my uh, Netflix Hulu line and then with my podcast because um, they do have they had a radio app before but it wasn't as good um, I'm going to put that with my iCloud photos app oh and another thing and this will be the last thing I say about the new Apple TV update is Disney Channel and the Disney XD which I think one of the Avengers shows is on um, and I think even that's Cartoon Network oh they need to get a Cartoon Network I do like the leather, the, the Weather Channel app I don't use oh I did watch the Smithsonian it was about flower, um, 
Killer Flowers or something like that. It was kind of funny. But I, I still don't know what a Crunchyroll is. It's in Japanese, so I'm not paying attention to that. Um, I like the iTunes, iTunes Festival. And, of course, the Apple events. They'll take that off here in a week or two since there's nothing really going on. Um, Flickr I don't use. I wish there was a way we can delete some of these apps because I don't use the Flickr anymore either. Um, or the Major League Baseball or the NBA or the hockey. I'm just not into it. Um, but uh, I think that's about it. Like I said, thank you guys uh, for tuning in. And don't forget to check out Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I want to enjoy the series. I hope it can only get better. They had a clip hanging at the other end of the series at the end of it. The- the pilot episode the other day and um, it's going to be great check out um, the Apple update um, with all the bells and whistles check out the iTunes radio um, I'm going to enjoy some of the new stuff that they added to Apple TV I love my Apple TV um, but you know guys have a great week thanks for tuning in I'm David this is Fanboy Weekly and we'll see you next time check us out on Facebook at the 5 by 5 or tweet us at the 5 by 5 or go to Recycle Block Talk for past shows. Thanks for tuning in.